So does pro fun with the kids. Or PRP help a torn meniscus? It, it very well can. Now, again, there's always going to be a percentage of folks that this stuff is not going to help. But gosh, I don't know how. I've treated a lot of people with meniscal tears. And um, I've, you know, fortunately, a lot of these folks have been able to avoid surgery. Uh, I've had people that had surgery and they were still symptomatic and I treated them with PRP and then, they're, and then they got better. Um, I had a kid who had, a, he's a, a baseball player, he had a labral tear in his shoulder, had it surgically repaired, was good for about a year, pain came back, nothing helped, um, and then so I did one PRP on him using the ultrasound and he's virtually 100%. He's like, I got a bionic shoulder now. You know, it's, it's kind of cute. All right. Um, now, a couple factors that will negatively impact your success with a regenerative therapy. Thank you very much, Jonas. I appreciate it. Is, um, and the research has shown this. Number one is uh, the severity of the injury. Naturally, the more severe an injury is, the less chance there is that it's going to repair, specifically with arthritis. If you have bone-on-bone -bone arthritis, the research shows that it can still work, but it's just not going to work as well as compared to if you have mild to moderate arthritis. And unfortunately, the other factor, yes, question? Time from injury. Time from injury has not been fully researched yet. Uh, the literature that's there has anything from, most of the time the, the research actually shows chronic injuries. Um, I know that the inclusion criteria, anything greater than three months old in some of, in, in actually several of the studies. Uh, one of the landmark studies looking at low back pain with prolotherapy, dextrose prolotherapy, the average length of time of pain was 14 years. So you had people with back pain on average for 14 years that went through they, they took all comers, actually, people that had PT, epidurals, uh, facet injections, trigger point stuff, everything, manipulation, chiropractic, fit, all, all of that. They still had chronic pain for 14 years. Actually, while we're on the subject, very interesting study. You know what? Okay, here's what we're going to do. I have about 15 slides with research stuff on there. They're boring as anything, all right? It's just a bunch of statistics and numbers. I'm not going to bore you with that. I'd like to kind of make it a little bit more of an open discussion. I'm going to focus a little bit on the research right now to answer some questions about, you know, does this stuff actually work? What does the science show, all right? Uh, and then answer your questions in the meantime. So it was a study in 2004 by this guy Yelland out of Australia. It's fun to hear him talk, you know, I love that Australian accent. And um, what he did was, now the study results were negative, all right, because he, he, he really tried to stay strict with how he interpreted the, the, the data. What he did was he had two groups. One group got dextrose prolotherapy. The other group still got ligamentous injections, but it's only with saline, no dextrose. The technique was identical in both cases. So it was not a placebo. And this is the, the, the sticking point that, um, that uh, it happens. And um, so... Um, people will mistake a control group for placebo. Now, placebo means that you do a, a non-interventional something that people th can't tell the difference if you've actually done an intervention or not. In this case, he actually stuck the needle in the ligament and he injected stuff, it just wasn't dextrose. So what he found was, in this group of people that had an average pain score of 7.3, I think it was, for an average of 14 years, he did, I believe it was three treatments. Um, I don't remember the time interval. It might have been at one month intervals or something like that. And their pain scores dropped from seven to about two point something. And it stayed at two point something for two years. And that's as long as he followed up. He didn't do additional follow up after 24 months. So we don't know how long the pain improvement lasted. It might have lasted two years and one month, or it might have lasted five years. We don't really know. But point being that both groups, the, the dextrose group and the saline group, had improvement of significant magnitude that lasted for two years. That's not placebo, folks. And we know, actually, placebo can account for 30 to 40 percent of your positive effect, and it usually wears off within one month or less. So that's definitely not placebo. But the way it was interpreted was that the treatment group did no better than the control group. Therefore, prolotherapy doesn't work. But when you really look at the data, uh, it's clear that, yeah, this stuff works. It's just that we don't know exactly what you inject and what's doing what. Is it really the dextrose that's making the difference, or is it just the fact that you're you know, causing a, a tissue expansion of the ligament? You know, we don't really know. Um, so, and a, a number of studies have shown similar results where it's like the control group and the treatment group, group both got better. Um, the amount of literature to give you a sense of how popular this stuff is in the world of research, 
90% of the papers that are coming out are on platelet-rich plasma. Reason being that's where the money is. You got you know, dedicated patented technology with centrifuges and you got companies that have money that can pay for these studies and all that stuff. Nobody's gonna pay for sugar water, right? So unfortunately, most of the money is in PRP. That's where 90% of the studies are. In 2009, okay, so I did a, uh, an online um, medical database search using the keywords prolotherapy, platelet-rich plasma, and pain. Very simple you know, uh, search. 2009, there were nine dedicated studies. 2010, there were 26. 2011, there were 43. And in the first month of 2012 alone, there were already eight papers in the first month. So you look at that exponential curve. I mean, over the next couple of years, there's going to be a huge amount of research that's going to come out on this stuff. And by and large, the, the vast majority of the research shows positive results. Now, there are a lot of differences in the quality of the studies. Only a couple, only a few of the studies are high quality, you know, randomized control trials where you have control group and treatment group and it's randomized and people, you know, nobody knows who's getting what and there's independent examiners that are evaluating patients. You know, that highest level of evidence, there's only a handful of studies so far. There's a whole lot of studies that are looking at, you know, prospective case series where you kind of se se sequentially evaluate patients as they come in. Um, and uh, there's a lot of uh, pretty solid data you know, looking at that, uh, at those types of studies. And they're evaluating many different types of joint areas. Before 2009, um, you pretty much had like elbow, ten like tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, knee arthritis, Achilles tendon, low back and neck. That's pretty much it. Since that time, they're looking at hip arthritis, knee tendon problems, finger problems, wrist problems. What else have they looked at? Ah, one interesting thing is that the shoulder, they haven't really studied that much yet. I don't know why, because you know, how many people have rotator cuff problems, right? The research that's there has looked at using platelet-rich plasma in augmenting healing after surgical repair of rotator cuffs. But looking at platelet-rich plasma for treatment before they get surgery, hasn't really been done yet. Actually, th there's a couple of like case reports and stuff like that, but in terms of a high quality study, hasn't been done yet. So I'm actually considering um, doing a multi-center trial. I've talked about it, you know, just kind of talking with some of my colleagues about considering doing something like that. You know, obviously it takes a whole lot of work to do something like that, but who knows, if we actually get our protocols in place and any of you have a rotator cuff and you want to get treated for free, hey, you know, come on in. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's gonna be, you know, it's probably gonna take a year or two for us to get the protocols uh, down for something like that. Uh, point being, the research is definitely exploding, uh, and all indications are that, are that this stuff works. It doesn't always work, but it works very well for most of the things that it's being used for. Tendon injuries and arthritis are the two main things.